This is how I know this generation is cooked. We're using TikTok as a way to, to gain help. Call the cops, bro. Yo. What's good YouTube here? We're gonna be looking at TikTokers who capture their final moments. It's a little ironic. TikToks are usually like 30 seconds or less. How you gonna capture your final moments on a TikTok, buddy? If you're watching YouTube, join us on Twitch for live every day. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, let's get it. On Damn February 17th of 2021, a little girl by the name Felicia Kanashuk would post a message to her TikTok profile. What'd she do? Typically, she would post fun, child-related content to a small following. Okay. However, that day, her post couldn't be any more harrowing and serious. What is it? And the first thing you're doing is recording a TikTok? Respectfully speaking, I know she's a child, but call the cops. Call the Russian cops, my nigga. Get him out of here. Why she got a face tat? Or is that a bruise? On a day when her father left to visit the local shops, their neighbor began to knock on the door. Felicia, being alone with their youngest brother, refused to answer. However, the knocks were persistent and aggressive. The only thing she thought to do was to post a TikTok to hopefully spread awareness of the situation and potentially get help if needed. So you're telling me a nigga that's using TikTok open the app, he gonna see your shit and niggas don't even answer Amber Alerts. What makes you think they gonna answer a TikTok? This is how I know this generation is cooked. We're using TikTok as a way to, to gain help. Call the cops, bro. Felicia would then go on to say that these knocks continued for over an hour. It should also be an hour. Oh yeah, that nigga is bugging. Is your knuckles not hurting by now? Yo, some people got too much free time. Be noted that maintenance men were working on the home during this interaction. However, they ignored the knocks as they felt it wasn't their business to address a visitor. Why Felicia didn't bring her worries to them, I'm not sure. It's the, it's the tic tackers, bro. It's the tic tackers. That's how, that's what Soon, it is. Soon the knocks would stop, and Felicia would get a message from her friend asking if she wanted to go to the park in hopes of feeling safe with fellow company. Okay. Relieved, she quickly said yes and waited for her friend. During this time, Felicia's father would arrive home, and after hearing a soft knock on the door, Felicia. Oh my. That was the most realistic knock I've ever tell y'all don't understand, nigga. My heart dropped to my ass. Felicia would answer, only to be greeted in fear by the neighbor. In a swift attempt to close the door, Felicia was shot numerous times. Her father quickly ran to his daughter's side, and after screaming at the maintenance worker to call for help, listened to his daughter's final words. Dad, I have been killed. The neighbor in question- What beef do you have with a nine-year-old girl? And bro, R.I.P. bro, I know, I feel bad for the dad. Imagine being in the father's position, seeing your daughter like that. Question was a 33-year-old man named Vasily Donetsk. Oh goodness, According to Felicia's father, the two were typically in good standings. However, recent arguments regarding noise complaints left their relationship tense. This was likely the catalyst- You gonna kill someone because your ass can't keep the noise down? Do you know how crazy that is? for Vasily's torment on the children that day, and the reason for Felicia's demise. This shooting occurred only 15 minutes after she posted her last TikTok. R.I.P, man, R.I.P. The 22-year-old Gan Su Zhang lived the dream that many aspire, to be a social media influencer. At first, he simply would dock- Shout out their culture, but my nigga, I know it takes you about an hour to swallow some shit. Is that not painful? It looks cool, don't get me- No, actually, no, I'm sorry, this low-key kind of child abuse. Look, look at me, I look like I've been through that with my neck. I don't know how y'all could do this, bro. First, he simply would document his experiences in different parts of the world, capturing different cultures and fast- Yeah, I seen this, I seen this. No, actually, Chad, this story is crazy. Fascinating customs. These videos would solely be for his own collection, however this would soon change. Mm -hmm. His worldwide adventure would be halted once he landed in Africa. Not because of any financial or technical issue, but because he fell in love with the continent. 
He bonded with the locals and found immense- If my locals were built like this, I'd bond with them too. That's all I'm gonna say. And found immense joy in immersing themselves in their livelihood. He soon found a girlfriend and after capturing some videos of the local food, had an idea. What if he posted all these videos to social media? Mm. Gon created a TikTok account called Chubby Goes to Africa, where him and his girlfriend would travel across Africa to try different foods and talk with locals in the area. The idea was an immediate success, and it wasn't long before his account would take off. Soon he built a social media team and enjoyed the lifestyle of traveling across Africa to an audience of about 5 million people. Damn, that much people are interested? With this type of fame comes those who follow. What Some happened? of Gon's fans would become friends and join Gon in his adventure across the continent. They would each develop their own social media following because of this, and for the most part, every team member was more than happy with this sporadic fame. Okay. All except for one. What happened? 32 year old Fang Zhang Young. You see, like, you should expect some shit coming out of. You could tell he was thinking about a devious plan. You see how big his head is? No, this is the real life Asian Megamind. Was a member of this content group. He was friends with everybody, however, his personality didn't quite mesh well with the others. Yeah. Gan was typically known to be a very charismatic, comfortable person to be around. Part of this is likely what influenced his success, however, Fang was quite the opposite. People have been found noting that interacting with Fang was often awkward oh and uncomfortable when creating content for TikTok. Despite this though, Gan still encouraged You got a Gucci backpack and you still worried about killing niggas, dog. Fang to continue. However, as tensions between the group rose, Fang was unfortunately let go. Mm. While you might think that this would cause an altercation between the two, Fang was surprisingly understanding. What's he up? departed from the group and okay. continued to make content on his own, Good. showing moderate success and traveling across the world in a similar fashion as mm -hmm. Gan. Mm -hmm. Everyone's relationship seemed beautiful. However, it wouldn't be long before tensions would rise. No, chat, y'all don't understand. These two weigh the same. Y'all see his weight? Just attribute this weight to this man's head. I guarantee y'all both of them are 500 pounds. Is once again. According to Feng, when Gan was- Bro had a master plan in that cranium? No, he, he did. Traveling to China to visit family, he gave Gan roughly $1,500 to purchase him an iPhone, as okay. doing so in Africa was impossible. Gan agreed, however, after returning, no iPhone was bought, and the money Fang sent him was not returned. Nigga, there's no iPhones in Africa? What the hell do they be using then? There is their, no their confirmation to the legitimacy of this story. However, Gan would choose not to address the situation. Fang would continue to make claims against Gan and his team saying that they sent virus-infested meals to his home and destroyed property that Fang owned. Why? I initially wanted to believe Gan, as there was no evidence to back Fang's claims. However, on a trip to Nepal, Fang's hometown, Gan made a comment saying, I've come to beat him up. Damn. During the trip to Nepal, uh, Is he gonna use his head as a weapon? On December 4th of 2022, What's up? Gan would go live one last time. Damn. Where he traveled through the streets of Nepal, unknowing what lurked within the shadows. What's up? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Merely a second after this moment, screams can be heard. Dog, imagine your death in 4K HD on it on the live, bro. Your whole family could see your death. Oh shit! I don't know if he has children, but dude, they all gonna know. Fang would sneak up behind Gan and stab him numerous times. Why did you stab him, nigga? You could have just headbutt him. It would have done critical damage as well. The back and stomach. Damn. Slain in the middle of Nepal streets, Fang wouldn't flee the scene, but would instead stay by Gan's dying body and scold him. He wanted to ensure that in Gan's final moments, even he would know who had won. Mm. In the days that followed, Fang would be arrested by the authorities and taken into custody following the murder. They probably give him prison cells this wide and his head still can't fit through it. I would tell him to think with his head next time, but <laughs> oh, he definitely thought it out. Let's get the next one. What's up? Harrison Gilks, a Canadian teenager, got diagnosed with a rare cancer known as rhabdomyia sarcoma at only the young age of 16. It wasn't until two years later that he would find out his cancer was terminal. 
Damn. However, instead of wasting his final years depressed and alone, he decided to do something inspiring. Damn, chat. That's kind of sad. Health is wealth, bro. It don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter how good you look, dude. Be happy, bro. Be happy. Definitely F cancer, though. Is I'd like to make a little series called uh, maybe like bucket list series. I'm going to go out and do a bunch of stuff that uh, I've always wanted to do. You know, I'm not sure what yet. You know, maybe skydiving or, you know, just stuff along those lines. Harrison posted a TikTok about his cancer and it dreams of completing as many bucket list activities as he could in the little time he had left. Mm. This TikTok grew exponentially fast Damn. and kickstarted the overwhelming support behind his goal of making his last years some of his best. Oh, that's fine. Thanks to many donations, Harrison quickly began going on many adventures. That's fine. Both on the ground and in the sky. That's fine. During this time, he would update his fans on his health and even express some encouraging news, stating that the tumors in his lungs and prostate stopped growing. That's fine. It's also a scan where the big tumor in my prostate stopped growing for now, and the ones in my lungs have only grown a little bit. He Damn. continued to gather more life experiences, and his audience watched the day as Harrison's 18th birthday was approaching. This milestone would be monumental. Harrison was able to see his 18th birthday. However, on October 21st, the day he turned 18, social media heard nothing. Damn. People understood that this must be a very special and sensitive moment. However, they began to get a little concerned when no update was posted throughout the following weeks. Harrison pretty much went MIA for an entire month what until happened? November 17th when he returned to TikTok with what some happened? unfortunate news. So the chemo I did all summer, it didn't really work. The tumor kept progressing and it's getting a little bigger and it spread to my hip too. The cancer wasn't looking good. It was growing and even worse, spreading. The clock was ticking and Harrison gave his final push towards his bucket list. In the next three months, Harrison would travel all across the globe, enjoying tours of the mountain peaks and Damn. the beaches of Cancun. Bro, look at his hair, bro. You could tell he's going through it. Even his eyes don't look the same, bro. I feel so bad for him, bro. He spent quality time with his family, his friends, and even got to meet multiple members of his favorite hockey team. Harrison is one of the purest reminders I've seen to keep your head high and live life to its fullest. On March 22nd of 2023, Harrison would take to TikTok. Bro, he just looks weak, bro. Nah, cancer really be fucking niggas up, bro. One last time. This was his final message. Uh, chances of me going home, very slim. So I'll be in the hospital for probably the remainder of whatever time I get left. Pray for me and my family. Uh, it's been a great ride with you guys on the bucket list. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you for all the support throughout everything. Bucket list complete. Harrison would pass shortly after this. Damn, bro. That's a week before my birthday. R.I.P. Harrison, man. Now, chat, we got to do a cancer stream, bro. Inquisitor, what's up? What's Inquisitor up? is just as tragic as any other entry in this list. What happened? Unlike the others, however, it's not a display of unfortunate circumstance, nor a crossfire between two colliding parties. What do you do? This is an example of how even the best decisions don't guarantee the best life. So what did he do though? Inquisitor was a famous TikToker who cosplayed as the character Ghost from the Call of Duty franchise. Okay. In the video game, Ghost is most known for his- I remember this meme. This meme spread like wildfire, bro. <laughs> silent and mysterious persona. However, Inquisitor brought his own character to the man behind the mask. Okay. He was easygoing, always positive, ah. and remembered to use his following for good and spread kind messages to That's those cool. watching. Why? Dude, his eyes are big as shit though. Are those natural? Are you so splendid? Around every edge, Inquisitor just seemed like a good guy. What Unfortunately happened for him, however, he didn't account for the evil that often follows with fame. What happened? As his audience grew, Inquisitor decided to hire a female editor to help him develop content to keep up with his newfound success. Okay. As content began to get pushed out, Inquisitor would continuously compliment the work. 
He would always mention how it looked fantastic and would often use the phrase, I love her. I mean, no, he means platonically, all right? It should be noted that this was said as a friendly gesture. Yeah. One that he used loose and often with many people. However, in this day and age, Inquisitor should have watched his- Dude, bro, you see? That's the problem with society. Y'all sexualize everything. Like, yeah, if I told y'all I love y'all, I, I don't sleep at night fantasizing. Oh my goodness. Let me get off to my t my Twitch chat. Uh, no, bro. It's platonically. Don't tell me they bullied him that much to the point where he, he killed himself in GTA. Words a little more carefully. As it turned out, Inquisitor's editor was underage and saying phrases such as, I want to marry her. Duh, I could defend that I love her, like at platonically, cause you know, she. I, I understand she edits her videos and you know, editing could be task. I want to marry her. This is Josh Giddy in disguise. Although in context as a compliment towards her editing work was something that raised suspicion. Something that caught up to Inquisitor very quickly. I still don't think- Another wait, TikTok listen, user by the name Tito is acting badly released a statement to his large audience of almost a million followers okay. that Inquisitor was grooming his girlfriend the editor that Inquisitor hired. He used out of context chat logs and involved the endearing phrases such as I love you to spread a rumor that the 17 year old girl was being groomed by the man in the mask. People quickly turned against Inquisitor. I feel like I don't know if this person has negative intent. I mean, the Mary Heard is crazy. And his brand of a loving and friendly face was now tarnished. In other words, Inquisitor's life as a social media icon was now ruined. Inquisitor would stop posting for se several weeks, until October 9th of 2023, where he would change his profile bio to, I want to die. He would then go live a few hours later, where all you could see was a glass door in an empty room. As the live stream continued, rocks would come flying through as Inquisitor's family began to break into his home. No one knew what was going on. However, after the company entered, they began to perform CPR on a body, and at that moment, Everybody knew what happened. Inquisitor took his life just off screen from the live stream. Damn, bruh. Bro, the internet could be so cruel, but not everyone could be a content creator. I'll be real with you. You gotta know how to handle how to handle certain things with, with certain shit. You see the way Dream handled it. <laughs> Dream's been handling it for the last couple of years and nobody suspected a thing. R.I.P, bruh. After this, evidence began to surface of the master plan that had been in effect for months. Tito and Inquisitor's editor were trying to frame Inquisitor of being a predator. Chat logs were leaked between Inquisitor and his editor that showed the young woman trying to form a relationship with Inquisitor. However, she was declined numerous times. So y'all, y'all set up my nigga, y'all set up my nigga Inquisitor, my nigga Inquisitor was a legend, y'all was trying to make my nigga a pedo, and he not. Y'all gonna get me heated, bro. Chat, we flying out. We flying out of Italy. Y'all really tarnished my man and he wasn't even trying to rock with her, bro. Now nah, y'all gonna get me heated now, bro. At one point, she even lied, stating she wasn't a minor. However, Inquisitor still asked for her to kindly stop talking to him. Chat logs between Tito and the editor even leaked, showing proof that they were trying to gather evidence to tarnish Inquisitor's reputation. Every accusation was a lie. And Ooh. the world found out about it just when it was too late. Inqui Inquisitor was a loving friend that shared his personality to the internet. He spread positive messages and advice to anyone who needed it. He was a good person, someone who found himself in the crosshairs of a malicious evil. Although gone too soon, I'm glad the truth came out, as Inquisitor can now be remembered as the great person he was, and not for the predator, he wasn't. Nah, I'm mad, chat. I'll be real with y'all niggas. I'm heated, bro. Nah, this shit make me want to cry, bro. Think about it. A nigga ain't do none wrong. He ain't do none wrong. And he was getting all this hate. He probably had family members calling him a pedo too, bro. You get what I'm trying to say? All this hate. Y'all can't be quick to, to, to blame niggas on it, especially with Discord messages. Y'all know anyone could create an account with a Discord name and fake shit. And now imagine how stupid all those niggas felt that was calling them this and that, and he ain't even done none, bro. To all the people that was like doing all of that shit, calling him a pedo, just know there's blood on your hands. Be very careful what you say to people online, because if they were to do some shit, nigga, that blood is on your hand. That's how I see it, bro. <sighs> That's heavy, bro. That's deep. R.I.P. Inquisitor. May everyone on this list rest in peace. Facts, bro. That was a heavy video. But R.I.P. to all those victims. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you guys join us on Discord, catch us on Twitch, all that good stuff, man. Make sure you guys subscribe. Rockstar for life. Love y'all.
stay safe and stop cyberbullying, bruh. Why is cyberbullying normalized, bruh? I get it if it's on some Instagram real jokey shit, but don't don't be calling people these things that they that you know they aren't. In peace.